Hello, everyone. <clears throat> I don't know why that's always my tune. Hold on. I always get up here and forget to put chapstick on, and then my lips are ashy the whole video. Let's not do that one, right? Hold on. Mm -hmm. Okay. <clears throat> Better. Better. Okay. <laughs> welcome. Welcome to your September video. Woo! We made it to September, guys. Like, what? You know what I mean? Wow. Summer was lit. 2017 has just been extreme, is the word I'm hearing. So extreme, okay? Um, since January, so much shifting has been happening, so much preparing, so much, like, healing, dealing with things, so many conversations, so much changing, so much traveling, so much moving, so much growth, like, Ooh, and we had the eclipse point, I feel like, was a major tipping point. And now, I feel like, honestly, first let me get to this point, I feel like we all had this super excitement for the eclipse. Everybody was lit. Like, I was so lit for the eclipse, you know, and it was a great energy. Um, the eclipse itself, leading up to it, was intense. I feel like I slept the entire time. My thoughts were, you know, off a little bit, really, really moody. Um, it was interesting. And then even afterwards, headaches and stuff, like, there was just a lot going on. Um, and I feel like what happened, though, is we had this, all our hopes were on this eclipse that everything in our wishes we had been preparing for was going to manifest and be in our lives, like, instantly, you know? And that does happen with eclipse in times, but what I feel like what went a little bit unnoticed was that the eclipse was trining Saturn, um... And Saturn is long-term as hell. Saturn is slow-moving. Saturn is about um, putting forth the effort. It's about hard work as well. So it's not necessarily about just getting things. It's like, okay, you might get the idea there, and that you need to work towards manifesting that. Or you're going to get like, oh my god, the eclipse was like, I got accepted into college, yay! Shit, okay, now I have to actually go to college and like get this work done and like get my degree. You know, it's not necessarily like, oh my god, I want a car. You know what I'm saying? Um, that's more Saturn, okay? Um, Jupiter was in the aspect as well, but Jupiter, the entire transit, and Libra has been squaring Pluto, okay? I mean, opposing Pluto. Um, wait. Pluto's in Cap... No, 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 yeah, yeah. It's been squaring Pluto. Um, and so that's just this tense, challenging energy that's not allowed Jupiter to be as expansive and as, as abundant, I can say, um as usual, and it's still the same way, but what's happening is Jupiter, with the blessings it brings through Libra, it's been bringing, it's been attached with that Pluto transformation, okay? So that takes more time, that's the slowest moving planet, and that's about deep transformation. So there's a lot coming with the blessings that are coming with Jupiter, but it's it's long-term, again, with Saturn, and it's transformational with Pluto, okay? So that takes, it's not necessarily instant. Um, and again, with it being so transformational, it might not even be material, Okay, a mental transformation could completely shift your, your reality and what you manifest in, um, yeah, reality. Um, you do not, it's not necessarily like getting a new car might be great in physical reality, but if you're not, don't have the mentality to, of abundance, you're going to lose the car or it's not, you know what I mean? So you kind of see what I'm going at. Um, so this eclipse definitely was interesting, it, but it definitely showed everyone got a glimpse of, of what they want in the future. Everybody has a, a better picture. We kind of get now, we're kind of seeing where we, you know, need to go and in, in what direction we need to go in, which is amazing. Um, and so I'm super excited for the eclipse. I definitely think also a lot has, we were able to heal a lot and move past a lot of things and we're on a different mission now. I feel completely like I'm, I'm not in this self search that I was before. Um, and now I'm ready to outwardly go and now I'm trying to maneuver myself with the public and maneuver myself and see how, you know, not as much how I can love myself because I feel like I've gotten that much down with all of this 2016, 2017 thing. Not that, of course, I'm still learning how to love myself and developing and constantly will find more about myself always, but my 100% focus is not solely on me. You know, I'm not in the hermit mode anymore. I'm more outward with my energy, okay? And I feel like we all are um, from this eclipse especially. And so now, and notice the day after the eclipse was Virgo season. Okay, um, we have, which is all about getting things done. Virgo, to me, is like the tutorial for life. You know what I'm saying? Um, Pisces rules the karma, and, and Virgo as well, but Pisces is like, 
and they're op- opposing signs. So Pisces is about, you know, um, yeah, the karma we bring in, the collective consciousness and, and um, connecting with spirit and all that kind of stuff and, and the collective. Um, and Virgo is the opposite of that, which is, which is the same thing. It's ruling the collective, but it's ruling how to, it gives the advice, the mother, you know, it's like the mother sign that gives them, not necessarily the mother, because that's more cancer, but it's kind of like Mother Mary, like a, a nurturing, um, all-knowing mother, okay, kind of like um, The Sound of Music, um, kind of like Mary Poppins vibes, um, that kind of vibe, that's Virgo, okay, um, all with the, the grandma with everything in her purse, Virgo energy, you know what I'm saying, uh, oh, here, I got this, this is gonna fix that, this is gonna fix that, oh, you need healing here, boom, 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 boom. Got you here. Got you here. Need to lose weight. Boom, boom, Diet here. Boom, boom, boom. Got you. Got you. Got you. Active. Boom, boom, boom. Like, Virgo. You know what I'm saying? So that's what we're getting into. Now we have to see far away. Like, this is like, I know where I want to go. I know what I don't fuck with anymore. I know what I do. And now let me move towards what I want to do. You know what I'm saying? Um, and now that we're in Virgo season, it's time to see, okay, how can I get these ideas I've been having and these inspirations and materialize them? I love Virgo season. I have Virgo rising, which is my energy all day. I love getting things done. I love figuring things out and letting and seeing how things unfold um, and putting effort into help with things unfolding. I'm not the best with just letting things f- flow and, and, and just waiting. I like to be in, in you know, help with that, um, which is very Virgo. Um, we have Mercury just left. So, if, and also, though, there's been a contrast, and, and since the eclipse, it's been mad intense with, since it's Mercury retrograde, and this critical energy. I've been having such critical thoughts, um, bad, you know, judgments coming back. And this is all from this Mercury being in Virgo, um, retrograding back. So now Mercury's in Leo, like as of like, I'm making this video, and retrograding back towards the ecliptic point on 28 degrees. And it'll go direct September 5th, so that'll be great. Um, but once it, now it's in Leo, we're a lo- lot less critical. It's a lot less intense in the, in our mentality. Um, yeah. And so that's great. Um, what else is going on? Venus is now out of cancer as well. So the deep, deep soul healing and cleansing and purging is pretty much over. Um, we still are feeling it, of course, but now Venus is going to Leo and we're working on, you know, feeling again, what we love and, and, and how we can, follow our hearts even more, okay? And, and Venus is also healing and, and and all the things that have been happening. It's behind, you know, all the planets. So Mars was tearing up Leo. You know, Sun's gone through Leo. Mercury's gone through Leo. North Node Eclipse is over there. So now Venus is the soothing, the beauty. It's coming and making our hearts okay with everything that happened um, through this Leo transit. Um, what else that I want to talk about in September? Again, um, check my Instagram for more deep transits daily. Um, this video, I'm not going to really go deep into the transits because I ended up doing that anyway. Um, so I just want to give more general energy. Um, and that's basically, oh, Mars is going into Virgo. That's the last one thing I want to talk about. So number one, our active energy, Mars has been in a fire sign for like a month. Okay. And that's been a lot of like masculine energy you have to put forth effort and courage and do this now that mars enters virgo it's still going to be effort and it's still going to be um fixing things like this virgo energy and getting our life together we have the motivation finally to do things um because mars our motivation that's going to be in virgo so we're going to be able to we'll want to change our path we'll want to heal things we want to change our health and routine and, and and make ourselves more efficient but um Oh, it's a feminine sign. Virgo is feminine energy, so it's more about more receptive. It's less about what you need to do and what you need. It's more about what you're opening yourself up to receive. Okay, so it's going to be a lot less um, making sure all your dots are checked and make sure you've done everything because it might not always be that way. You know, it's going to kind of be um, you might be receiving some things as well. Okay, Um, so I think that's about it with the astrology of September. Now what I wanted to do, because it's just been a lot, everybody's been going through so much. Like I lost my fish, sadly. Um, that's not even the start of what's been going on, but there's, you know, so much going on, so many, and it's unexpected and really weird with this 
you know, Mercury retrograde. There's been conversations that have been going completely left, left when you don't, you know, you're not expecting things to um, go the way you, you thought, you know, it's, it's so unexpected. Okay. And so this is my favorite, what's well, more my most sacred deck that I use when I'm, you know, really need some guidance because it has the most prolific and beautiful word choice. Okay. Um, it's the sacred rebels. Um, guidebook, I mean, not the guidebook, but the oracle card, okay? And so since we're all going through so much right now, so much transition, I just want to pull a card for everyone, the collective energy. Spirit is lit. The energy is, like, moving these cards. Um, for everyone, and just kind of pull one for the collective before we get into each sign, okay? And um, hopefully this resonates with you guys. Um, so take a second and clear your mind. <clears throat> All right, we got the Collaborative Dreaming card. Okay, so I'm going to read this one. I don't really remember um, exactly what this one means. This is my most recent deck I got, and the meanings are so... Um, it's not like, you know, like this deck I love as well, but the interpretations are a lot, a lot more um, literal. All that glitters, you know what I mean? It's not gold, makes sense. Collaborative Dreaming, that's a little deep. Okay, so we want to make sure we get... The full understanding and look who goes right to the right to the page yes spirit okay 28 collaborative dreaming i'll do this so you can have some visual while i'm just reading this um also for the virgos or anybody who's really deep in um analysis with the reading um because sometimes i'm like well they're not make, being attentive with reading they're just reading from a book i'm going to just read from the book right now that we can get through this um, and i can get the message to you okay so collaborative dreaming your heart is big enough to dream not only for yourself, but for a new humanity. Imagine a world that is healed with respect, understanding, and with community that fosters life. Even your dreams that relate to you alone will contribute positively to the greater good, because that is the nature of your heart. Your heart naturally and intelligently cooperates in a grand scheme of loving creativity, working to heal the hearts of the world. The heart creates win-win situations that benefit the individual and the collective. You are being asked to honor your growing desire to co-create with conscious, like-minded people. Your collaborative dreaming is a heart-inspired win-win, bringing mutual enhancement to yourself and others. The heart wants to love and be loved. Working with others creatively is a way to allow the heart to grow. It is a chance for you to learn how to honor yourself and others and to find ways to live and let live, simply by growing and strengthening your active trust in your heart's guidance. You are asked to bear the rough patches that can happen when you work creatively with others. Ideas might clash and there can be friction, particularly if you have different ways of working. Sometimes big dreams need more fire to ignite them into reality. More fire might require more friction along the creative path. It is not meant to be a permanent condition, just an aspect of the creative process from which you can learn something useful, if you wish. Your guidance is to embrace any experiences of friction or tension, within yourself or as you work with another, with compassion, detachment, and tolerance. Creative endeavors, particularly involving groups, can bring up unresolved issues about being valued, heard, or capable. They can also trigger disputes about taking responsibility or inflame insecurities about being cast into unfamiliar roles of leadership or of having to follow. This might happen for you, for others, or for all involved. The stronger the creative energy that flows, the more likely that tricking will take place. It is the nature of creative energy to move in all directions. It doesn't just want to grow one project. Everything that comes into contact with it will grow. That means that the art and the artist are in the process of creation. This can be smooth, but it is more likely to be rough sailing, at least at, some, at times. A little greasy. Um, it is more usually a sign that growth is happening and you are feeling the growing pains. This oracle is guiding you to stay in your integrity, honor what you feel, and remember why you choose chose to open up to the group endeavors in the first place, especially if the group involvement becomes complex or challenging. Call an, on unconditional love each day and evening. It only takes a moment to do. I call on unconditional love. Please help and guide me in this project. You are going through this experience or will be in the near future because you are part of a new creative learning program for humanity. This is the whole new age coming in, everyone, like, literally everything is shifting, and so we're here to change it all, you know, we're here to really sh shift with humanity, okay? Um, this learning program is taking place at a spiritual level, 
and it requires highly individualistic and creative people to learn to work with each other without compromising who they are in order to reach a common creative goal. Flips. It is wonderful, important, and challenging creative and spiritual work. You need a strong sense of self to be able to engage in the process and not lose your voice during the journey. Now, this is the main thing about um, um, what we've been preparing. We literally have been preparing and learning more about ourselves and growing in ourselves so we can have a strong knowing of who we are so that we don't lose ourselves once we start collaborating. And that's what this is all about. Um, you need a strong enough... Okay. Okay. You need a strong enough sense of self to be flexible and know when to bend rather than break. You have to intuit what is going to be a good heart-inspired sacrifice for the greater good, and when you will need to stay true to your own voice for the greater good. Only the heart can guide you on those matters, and others may not always agree with your instincts and vice versa. That is part of the challenge of staying present so that the friction created can be channeled into creative energy rather than loss and emotional turmoil. Please remember that what really matters is that you hear your own voice. Others may or may not be able to receive it. When you hear your own voice, you will be able to connect with your heart's truth. You will know when it is right to remain in a group or when you need to withdraw in order to work with others who resonate at a more appropriate vibration and perhaps more in harmony with your own. Not every collaboration will be long term. Sometimes the learning will be short, sharp, and possibly even painful before it turns into the wisdom that is gained from experience. At other times, the journey will be more loving, supportive, and harmonious. This is neither better nor worse, just different. This oracle comes with particular guidance for you at this phase of your life, path, and creative journey. You are no longer to think of yourself as the lone wolf. Yes, you have your unique path to tread, but you now have tasks to accomplish for your own growth and the greater good that requires more than a one-man band. You will still do your own work, of course. However, others are on the way to help you. There is only so much a single drop of water can do on its own, though it is precious. Together, those drops can become a wave and make a considerable impact in the world. See how beautiful this stuff is? You are a part of a wave of loving consciousness and you are meant to be exploring collaborative dreams healing relationships, and conscious communities. Some connections will be short-lived and perhaps involve some learning experiences that you are hopeful of never needing to repeat. Others will be longer-term loves. Either way, you will emerge more of yourself and more in connection with the world that wants your ideas, presence, energy, and light. This oracle brings a message to those of you that are involved in a group and are struggling over whether to continue or to let it go and move on. You are asked to trust your heart and not to allow any group to become more powerful than the wisdom of your own heart. Always allow the sacred rebel within you to question authority. Is it loving and wise authority or is it coming from a place of fear-based control? Look to your heart's wisdom to discern whether your involvement in a group is healthy or not. Sometimes a group can only receive so much of our energy before it is time to move on. Sometimes a group is not receiving us at all, but we feel that we are meant to be a guiding hand in it for a period of time before our heart urges us to let go. Ask for guidance, do the healing process below, and trust in the following feelings that become clear to you over time. You will know what to do, and you must always trust your own voice above any other. Beautiful! So this is the healing process, guys. Um, so take a second. Okay, imagine a chain of paper dolls all connected, forming a circle. Imagine that the circular chain of paper dolls can be filled with a beautiful golden light, which begins in the heart of each paper doll. The light shines out and shimmers, making the paper dolls radiant, shining, and golden. Imagine a feeling of love connection, help, and goodwill shining along with the golden light. Stay with that image or feeling as long as feels good for you, then simply open your eyes and you have completed your healing process. Beautiful. Thank you so much for that message, Spirit. Beautiful. Okay. So now we're going to get into the individual um, tarot. I just kind of want to get a, a, a glimpse as to what September is going to bring and where we're at right now. So here we go. Capricorns, wow, wait, there's so many things on there, so many, so many. I 
feel like I did. I just talked loud. Okay. What's up, guys? Um, oh. Welcome to your September 2017 reading. Let's get into it really quick. For tarot, this kind of looking situation. Okay, kind of, so. Starting off in September, there will be a spark of inspiration if you already have not felt it. This is fire energy, so this is going to be something passionate. You're something you're passionate about, something your heart's in. Um, this is going to be something that's going to inspire you to create more. If you've been feeling kind of out of it recently, or like you've not been super motivated, um, this is going to give you a lot more motivation, okay? Um, especially, I feel, since, you know, I just heard kind of like Mars is going into Virgo, starting um, on the 5th of September, I believe. And so that's a fellow Earth sign, that's your sister sign, and that's a way more comfortable energy for you than Mars and Leo, okay? So motivation will come a lot more naturally to you. Even though this is fire energy here, um, different things spark us, you know what I mean? So um, you're going to have this inspiration if you've been looking for this, or if you already have it, this is, if you already have, you know, just new insights coming in, new excitements coming in, this is a confirmation of that, okay? Now you're being asked to really go into the depths of your um, intuition, um, and especially in the first week of September, because this is the moon card, which is all about your intuition, the spiritual realms, our subconscious, and it also represents Pisces, okay? Notice it is a full moon, and we have a full moon in Pisces coming up on the 6th of September, okay? So with that, I definitely think the first, of the, um, first bit of the month is going to come in and have a lot for you guys. Um, Lots of changes coming in for you guys, um, and um, I just had something else. Yeah, so you're going to make, make, make sure you maintain your intuition to really be in the flow, okay? Because there's going to be opportunities that are going to come in, and if you're not in alignment, you're not going to be ready to receive, receive them in the timing. It's going to be really about timing now, and really picking up the um, intuitive guidance, okay? So, like, I feel like I should be led in this direction, okay? I literally was just listening to um, a YouTube, um, it's Angel School, on his YouTube channel, he posts weekly, um, you know, just angel guidance, and it's beautiful, 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 and it always resonates, so I just finished listening to it for the week, and he was talking about, this week it's all about kind of, um, you know, the first week of September, again, with this full moon coming in, and in the month of September as well, it's also about just following what feels good and having faith that it will work out and not letting doubt and fear kind of creep in because we're on the way to our to these opportunities to being led but it's we're being led to them intuitively okay um, not through logic it might not make sense what what the real answer is okay um, so yes um, let's see what is next oh and then what's that that was going to lead to the opportunity is going to be something major something catalytic something that is going to change the game for you guys. Um, there's been something, you know, that maybe you have gone through recently, some kind of catastrophe or some kind of stress and, and drama over the summer, um, which has shaken you up a bit, but it really was a blessing in disguise to kind of give you a new foundation, okay? Um, and now that you have that, um, you have this new spark. The spark will lead you to this new okay? Um, again, don't pay attention to the logic right now. This is coming in reverse for you as for your advice. And so it's saying, like, it's going to be really intuitive, okay? Super, super intuitive. Especially, and it's also, I've got a message, if you're feeling left out or you're feeling not at home in a situation, you're feeling trapped at home, something related to home and your joy of home, um, solutions coming, okay? There, there, there is, you know, this is, you, you feel this trapped, um, like you're stuck in the past, or you were stuck in, in, in the same situation again, and no one's here for you, um, you know, those kind of things, and, and you don't have any, um, you know, this is the card of feeling left out, but they, they don't they don't realize there's support behind them, okay? And so there's support in hidden ways, and hidden realms for you, and I'm looking at this, um, for the moon card, okay, so it's, it's this, this hidden support, and this is just this, um, this, um, not hidden support, but yeah, it, it's unseen, okay? You're still being guided, but not in a very rational way, okay? Um, and so you're going to be guided to 
this new bit is coming in. Okay. In regards to Oracle, your Oracle um, guidance for your energy fell out when I, sh I shuffled the deck. Okay, boom. This is why it fell out. Keep knowing. Okay, so they're literally saying you're going to know. You're going to need to follow your, your soul's just knowing. It's going to feel right. Okay. Um, once it feels right, <coughs> excuse me. We've also been getting lots of synchronicities and things in this time and lots of to, to like keep us in the flow. Don't take those for granted and really once you see those things and then you move into them and like once you first have a realization that, you know, I feel like this is what I should do, don't go back on that. Don't don't start letting the doubts creep in because that's the past coming in, those past doubts. Um, and that's trying to mess you up a little bit. So you have a knowing of where to go, okay? That is your reading, Capricorn. I hope you enjoy September. Um, if you want to have a personal reading with me or talk about something or really get have a deep question about your energy or your situation, get in contact with me and we will get with that. Thanks so much, guys.